Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ranjani Rangan from Charm Health uh, for our Wednesday webinar series. Um, today, um, I will, I first of all, want to thank our sponsor, Emerson Ecologics, Wellobate, for sponsoring this event. Um, and uh, thank you all to the attendees for joining today. Um, today's webinar topic is how can diet screening tools improve patient outcomes? Uh, innovations in preventative care featuring diet ID. Um, I'm very excited to present our guest today, Dr. David Katz. Uh, he will be presenting uh, his diet, his rapid diet screening tool uh, that his company Diet ID has developed. Um, but before I go into that, um, welcome Dr. Katz. Uh, wonderful to have, have you present. Uh, I'll just dive right in into your honors and accomplishments. Um, Diet ID, uh, you are the CEO of Diet ID and founder, and actually I'm going to speak in the third person. Dr. Kast, uh, Katz has focused his career on preventative health and nutrition and has become a global leader in the space. He is the author of over 200 scientific articles. I don't, I don't even know if I've done anything of the same type of 200. Um, a value that is <laughs> focused on preventative care and nutrition. And he's the author of several textbooks on this topic. I believe you've authored 18. Uh, he's also recently published a book with Mark Bittman on how to eat. Uh, so that's very exciting. Um, you've also served, he has also served as a regular on-air medical contributor to uh, Good Morning America, ABC News, and appeared on Dr. Oz and Oprah. So I wanted to say Dr. Ka Oz, uh, Dr. Sorry, Dr. Katz, I've always wanted to meet Oprah. So for my association with you, officially, I'm only two degrees of separation. <laughs> um, so ever since I watched The Color Purple, um, I recently saw you uh, with Fareed Zakaria as well. So he's one of my favorite journalists. Um, you, he is the founding director of Yale University Prevention Research Center, past president of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine and founder, of course, of Diet ID. Um, so, Dr. Katz, as the world is reopening, um, I understand that you have been taking a leadership role in the response to COVID-19. I just wanted to say that because that's so important. And, um, and uh, we, many of us have seen you in the media and your op-ed uh, articles in the New York Times, including your uh, appearances across the airwaves, including CNN, HBO, uh, Fox, and MSNBC. Um, so, thank you for taking the time to calming the fear about the coronavirus. Uh, I believe you're, uh, you're the president of the Truth Health Initiative uh, where you do a lot of work uh, disseminating all the article, um, you know, resources and uh, where the trusted articles are, so thank you. Um, so today uh, we're gonna learn about Diet ID. Um, Diet ID is a digital toolkit. Uh, it's an assessment tool that takes uh, patients only a minute to complete. I'm sure Dr. Katz is going to go extensively into how it all works. Uh, but as far as I understand, Dr. Katz, it combines some uh, pattern-based recognition logic to make uh, dietary assessments quick and user-friendly and economical, scalable, um, and um, it enables better assessment of diet quality. Um, so, and, and I, as, my, as I understand it, the American Heart Association recently made a statement in August. Uh, if you could speak a little bit to that, that was August 2020 about um, making a recommendation or a statement saying that routine diet assessment implementation by healthcare providers is the way to go for long-term tracking. So if you want to speak a little bit to that or include that in your presentation. I'll get to that. So yeah, uh, Ranji, thank you for the, the kind intro. And it's great to be with you. Thanks for this opportunity. Uh, a shout out of thanks to Emerson for, for sponsoring uh, this get together and my appreciation to those of you attending. You know, we're, we're, we're devoting this time to dietary assessment. And I, I hope I will convince you if you didn't come into this already convinced of how critically important that is. But there's, there's a juxtaposition here between my career long focus on nutrition, lifestyle as medicine, and my involvement in the pandemic there. Um, so, you know, there, there really is an indelible connection here because if the commitment is to adding years to life, adding life to years, protecting people from preventable disease, the, the same skill set that pertains to cardiometabolic disease 
pertains to addressing COVID, adopting the view from altitude, how do we protect the most people during the pandemic? So my, my focus has been on total harm minimization to us as a population, on the importance of risk stratifying people. But then there is a signature blind spot in our national discourse about the pandemic. And you can ask yourselves, uh, how much have you heard about the absolutely central importance of acute health promotion by means of lifestyle. There's been very, very little discussion about that and, and no national policy effort to say, look, we came into this pandemic with hyper endemic levels of obesity, type two diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, coronary disease, the cardiometabolic cluster, which massively elevates the risk of bad COVID outcomes. So there's always been an enormous value proposition in addressing all of that because vitality is the gift that keeps on giving. But unlike any other time, the pandemic says there is an acute benefit to chronic health. You start working on diet, physical activity, again, the usual suspects, you will start to improve your immune system response today. So these things really are all connected. And again, I think that that really is the, the critical blind spot in the pandemic response. All right. So Mike, I don't know if you want to step in. I've got these three slides here at the beginning to talk about the partnership between Diet ID and Emerson. We're really proud of it. We're delighted to be engaging. Um, and I can take you through these three slides and you can speak to them if you're so inclined. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dr. Katz. Hi everyone, my name is Michael McClory. I'm the Inside Sales Manager here at Emerson Ecologics and Wellevate. And um, as you can see through, from this slide, Diet ID is available through Emerson Ecologics and Wellevate. And who are we? Well, Emerson Ecologics is the leading provider in the highest quality natural health products and solutions to health and wellness professionals. What that means is we have over 350 different brands that we carry. So we're a wholesale distributor. It's actually 382 brands that we carry, 16,000 different products that range from vitamins, supplements, natural products, um, paraben-free lotions, shampoos. It, it, it runs the gamut, but a lot of um, high-quality supplements that you can purchase wholesale as a practitioner in stock uh, and use to stock your in-office dispensary. So Wellevate is, as you can see here, we call it your turnkey alternative to in-office supplement dispensing, but not just an alternative, but also uh, in addition to your in-office supplement dispensing. So patients can go online and purchase products uh, from your Wellevate dispensary. So you have a, a, an online store where you can create recommendations for your patients uh, who can shop on their, their phone or on their computer and uh, purchase high quality supplements. And so if we're gonna to go to the, the next slide, what do we have here? So uh, this is how you access Diet ID, um, again, through Emerson Ecologics and Wellevate. So if you already have an Emerson Ecologics account, you can go to the resources section under education uh, in, on your Emerson Ecologics account. Uh, and, and just click down at the bottom, you can see Diet ID. If you do not have an Emerson Ecologics account, it doesn't cost anything to set up a, an account through Emerson Ecologics or Wellevate as long as you're a credentialed practitioner. Um, actually, Dr. Katz, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide. So you can visit, uh, it's not here, but emersonecologics.com or wellevate.me to set up your accounts or email our incredible sales team at sales. Uh, at wellevate.me. And uh, we, we have some promo codes for you to extend to your, your patients for Wellevate and some uh, additional offers on first time orders for practitioners. Excellent, right. Mike. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And again, we're really proud of this partnership. And, and by the way, uh, just to quickly lay out the, the value proposition of diet ID, and I'm about to tell you what it is and what it does, but we assess diet. We assess diet down to the level of nutrients, and the idea that you can shop for nutrient supplements knowing what nutrients a given patient is getting from their diet honors the word supplement. Now, there are many other things we do with nutrients. We use them as nutraceuticals. There, there are times we're relying on botanicals and nutrients for reasons other than filling gaps left behind by diet. 
But the word supplement implies supplemental to blank. We don't talk about it much because we haven't had the capacity to measure, but that blank is what nutrients are you already getting from food? We answer that question. So there's a path here to really personalize, customize, and refine the selection of nutrient supplements. So it's a beautiful partnership, Mike. We're very proud of it. Thank you for covering those slides. And without further ado, let me dive into the, the gist of the talk about dietary assessment. This is the right place to begin. We go back to August 26, 2019. This op-ed appeared in the New York Times. Our food is killing too many of us. And in this piece, Darish Mozaferi, and Dean of Nutrition at Tufts, whose name is probably known to many of you, and Dan Glickman, former Secretary of Agriculture, laid out the case that poor diet quality is the single leading predictor variable of premature mortality in the United States. It's also the single leading predictor variable for chronic morbidity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, stroke, hypertension, dementia, on and on it goes. And by the way, we've just crossed a tragic COVID threshold, haven't we? 500,000 deaths to the pandemic. Well, 500,000 people die prematurely as a result of poor diet quality every year in the United States, and it hides in plain sight. It hides in plain sight for many reasons, you know, because this is a cultural phenomenon, because familiarity breeds contempt. We can, we can go through a litany of reasons. But I think there's one really critical reason, and that is we do not routinely assess people's diet quality. So it's a bit obscured, it's veiled, it's, it's in the shadows. Now, this op-ed cited the primary literature that makes the case that diet is the number one predictor variable for all-cause mortality, killing 500,000 a year. But then the authors went on to enumerate what they saw as the potential remedies to this tragic problem. And the very first remedy they proposed is that nutrition should be included in every electronic health record. So part of the reason for today's discussion in front of all of you is we're really interested in determining what we can and should do with CHARM because we think full integration with an electronic health record would potentially make access to the, the power of diet ID even more seamless for users of Wellevate and, and uh, Emerson services. Uh, but it also becomes a prototype for what really ought to be happening in the world. This, this op-ed was not written to Diet ID and Charm Health, hey, it would be great if you guys got together. This was an op-ed to the world at large in the New York Times saying nutrition should be in every electronic health record. Well, somebody's got to go first. And I think that opportunity is right in front of us. And we're really excited. We think we can, we can make the user interface for, for practitioners extremely elegant this way. Um, have this information captured along with everything else. And again, we'll get into the particulars of how all this could work. But it's interesting that the op-ed from August of 2019 was followed, and, and Ranjani, you referred to this. So more recently, about a year later, uh, you said August, it looks like it was September, uh, the American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association, published a paper in circulation noting the importance of capturing diet in every clinical encounter. So this was a, a standing committee of the American Heart Association saying, we really can't have a situation where diet is the most, predictor, most important predictor of health outcomes, and we're not capturing this information. It needs to be done, and frankly, we need a tool that can do it, uh, and we are that tool. And they didn't know that at the time they, they published that paper. Uh, diet deserves to be a vital sign. There's an expression from the world of business that many of you likely know, and it's equally pertinent to the world of medicine. We don't tend to manage what we don't reliably measure, or if we flip it around, we manage what we measure. And so in medicine, we have vital signs. If we want to manage blood pressure, we measure blood pressure routinely. If we want to do something about heart rate too high or too low, we have to determine the pulse rate to begin with. We take temperatures. Uh, and we keep expanding the array of, of measures we consider critical, like the body mass index and potentially body composition and certain biomarkers in the lipid panel and measures of inflammation and on and on it goes. If it is critically important to health, we have to measure it so we can manage it. The single most important variable in the health equation is the overall quality of dietary pattern. Well, we need to measure that too if we want to manage it, and, and we make that 
possible. So th this is the space that Diet ID stepped into. So let's talk a little bit about just the, the, the overlap of diet, lifestyle, uh, and outcomes. And this is probably a space you're all familiar with, so I won't take a long time here. But again, I, I've already made the case diet is the single leading predictor variable for premature death from all causes in the modern world. Massive economic fallout associated with that. Uh, we're talking trillions, not just billions. Uh, and it's a leading cause of chronic disease. So poor diet quality doesn't just take years from lives, it takes life from years first. So this is a scourge. It's a scourge that hides in plain sight. This is a pandemic frankly, and it, it is an even bigger pandemic than COVID, and, it, and it's been with us year in, year out, and we do very little about it. Most diabetes is type 2. Almost all type 2 diabetes is preventable with lifestyle. So we, we have a global tidal wave of diabetes. Almost all of it would disappear if we routinely measured and managed diet. Cardiovascular disease is overwhelmingly preventable, and just improving diet a little bit can take us toward a reduction of a quarter, but if we optimize diet and lifestyle, we could eliminate 80 to 90% of all coronary disease. Uh, and, and some even argue that like smallpox and, and polio, we could effectively eradicate coronary artery disease by optimizing the lifestyle formula. And when you are using lifestyle to prevent disease, you're saving money too. And, and this is probably familiar terrain to all of you. But this is something that really is unique to the realm of lifestyle medicine because, you know, by and large, we spend money to save lives in medicine. If, if you have diabetes and we prescribe medication, medication is expensive, but you have to keep taking it because your diabetes doesn't go away. So you medicine, you know, that whatever the costs of, of visiting the endocrinologist, taking your meds, those costs go on forever. Saving lives is still a good thing. Saving kidneys and, and eyes and limbs is a good thing, but you're paying for it. When you use lifestyle, and diet to address these issues, you actually can reverse the pathology at its origins. And since people need to eat anyway, and actually you don't need to spend more money to eat well uh, than to eat badly, and that's a topic we can get to in the Q&A if you like, but you really don't, and we've done some research in that area, uh, you actually can save both lives and vital organs and money, add years to life, add life to years, and who's ever responsible for so-called healthcare costs actually is saving on average $263 per person per year when diet quality is improved. And what's referenced here is a specific incremental improvement in the diet ID metric, and we'll come to that in a minute. So I, I don't think that the general case for prioritizing the routine assessment of diet so we can manage it more effectively, I don't think the importance of that could be overstated. I think it's pretty self-evident, and I hope you all agree. So what is our remedy? Well, if you want to do a job, you need a tool. Uh, if you want to drive a nail, you need a hammer. If you want to cut a piece of wood, you need a saw. And so we have tools that could potentially help us measure diet routinely, and they're really, really bad. And I say this despite the fact that some of the people involved in developing some of these, like the FFQ, are people I revere. Walter Willett, uh, who was involved in, in developing the semi-quantitative food frequency questionnaire, is truly a dear friend, a close colleague, and, and one of the people in nutrition I respect the most. Uh, but I don't think Walter would deny the fact that this is pretty tedious. Uh, it takes 90 minutes. You have to remember how many times in the past six months you had pasta or eggs or chickpeas or broccoli and by the way how much each time and by the way how was it cooked and by the way what sauce went over it and by the way how much of that and nobody can ever hope to remember all of that okay well then you don't have to remember everything you ate for the past six months how about you write down everything you eat for the next seven days well the food frequency questionnaire takes 90 minutes and makes your eyeballs catch fire a seven-day food diary will take seven days and then it first needs to be submitted to a dietitian who's going to spend an hour or more analyzing it at a cost of 80 to $120. And all that analysis will produce is results for one person. But this information will be reasonably accurate, unlike the FFQ, which will be riddled with mistakes based on poor recollection, as will a 24-hour recall. Or maybe we can just count calories. These are bad tools. You know, I, I'm an I'm a enthusiastic amateur carpenter. I've got a great shop. I always want a good tool if I'm going to do a good job. If we need to assess diet routinely, these are bad tools. It's just that simple, and they capture some relevant information, but they're tedious, time-consuming, memory-dependent. They are not the path to making diet the vital sign it deserves to be. So some years back, uh, I had an idea about a new way 
Um, but I didn't just run with it because I thought I, I'm fortunate to call some of the who's who in nutrition and research, my friends and colleagues, let, let me turn to them. And you see some of them here, including Walter Willett, uh, David Jenkins, who invented the glycemic index, uh, and, and other luminaries, and said, here's what I'm thinking. Does this make sense? Can this work? And, and if so, can we develop it together? And it was after a chorus of enthusiastic amens here that we moved on to develop our innovation, which looks like this. There are a couple things I can invoke to explain the basics of how different diet ideas from everything that came before. Uh, one is Malcolm Gladwell's book, Blink, which explains the power of thinking quickly. We're really, really good, we homo sapiens, at pattern recognition. We're bad at remembering details, but we're really good at pattern recognition. It's a survival skill. So I was thinking about Blink, and I was thinking about this device, the Phoropter, that we all use if you go to the eye doctor. And as you can see, I've got these uh, on the bridge of my nose. To get an ocular prescription, we basically need our eyesight dialed down to the level of very specific units called diopters uh, to see if we need a correction. And that's done using images in and out of focus. We're shown two at a time like those balloons. And the question is, which of these is in focus A or B? I bet you've all played this game. And when you pick one, which in this case would obviously be B, the bottom image, we get two more images and the tech uh, working in our ophthalmologist's office says, okay, how about now A or B? And you play that game repeatedly for 30 seconds, maybe a minute, and they say, okay, we're done. We have a perfect measure of your, um, your ocular correction needs. Uh, we've got your prescription. Well, we're not trying to get your ocular needs at Diet ID. We're trying to characterize your diet, but we use the same method. We reverse engineer dietary assessment. When you're trying to remember everything you ate, what you're really trying to do is assemble a representation of your overall dietary pattern, one badly remembered food at a time. We said, let's skip over that to the end gate. Let's do that hard work for the individual. Let's create a comprehensive library of prototypes of diets stratified by both type and quality, turn those into images we can show two at a time on any screen and play the same game. Ask you which of these looks more like stuff you eat, A or B? And you pick one and we say, okay, how about now? And we play that game for about 60 seconds and then we've got you. And then we need to right size the diet and we use the mifflin saint Shore equation and I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, but we do a detailed, comprehensive dietary analysis based on pattern recognition, not recall. We do it in 60 seconds. This is the means to make diet the vital sign it deserves to be. If we're going to have nutrition in every electronic health record, we need something that is to diet what a blood pressure cup is to blood pressure. We have invented and commercialized that. We've been working on it for the past five years. So we have an image-based assessment. We have instantaneous analysis. It's infinitely scalable. And then this innovation using a, an image-based pattern recognition approach allowed us to build out the offerings. So we are the full suite of things that you would get from GPS and more. And what I mean by that is you think about a GPS in your car, for example, it can tell you exactly where you are. Well, we do that too. That's diet ID. It can help you locate your exact destination. We do that too. That's diet ideal. It draws a line from where you are to where you want to go and creates a turn list. Well, we do that with a personalized behavioral plan. We call it behavioral navigation. And, and by the way, because we've got exactly where you are and exactly where you want to go across a wide array of dietary options, we've got everything from paleo and keto and low carb to vegan and variations on whole food plant-based and everything in between, Mediterranean, flexitarian, you name it, you can pick the optimal version of the diet that's right for you based on your health objectives and your personal preference, we map that route. It's an N of one route, it's your route, and then we populate that route with micro challenges, basically a, a behavior modification experience, but it's behavioral navigation because you said where you wanted to go, we're just helping you get there like your turn list and GPS. We can track dietary change effortlessly. You don't have to log foods. You don't have to record everything you eat. We just repeat your diet ID at whatever interval we like. We can track your behavioral um, engagement with the platform and we have a social accountability system built in. Basically you can do this with buddies. And this is a, kind of how these images would look up close. Uh, and there's a lot behind this. We have three day 
uh, meal plans put together for all of our diet types, stratified to 2,000 calories a day by our team of dietitians. But in order to make the images easily accessible to the eye, so you can do this either or test and, you know, very quickly, we've invented a technique we call dietary fingerprinting. Just as this tiny little bit of me will map to me and uniquely me in all the world, we've identified the signature foods that represent a given cell in our map, and each cell is diet type, operationally defined. So for example, flexitarian, by diet quality. And for quality, we, we use an objective measure, the Healthy Eating Index 2015, that's been validated against all cause mortality, total chronic disease risk. So we have signature foods representing that, it maps uniquely to that one cell in our map. We can show you these little images. You don't have to look at three days worth of food. That's a lot for the eye to take in. Dietary fingerprinting. So if we line diet ID up against all the other methods of dietary assessment, uh, I won't linger here because I'm simply going to say it's better, stronger, faster. Uh, we, can, we can do a comprehensive dietary assessment in a minute. And if you're going to do both your ID, where am I now, and where do I want to go, okay, it'll take us about two minutes. Uh, and we've done this in thousands and thousands of people, including people over 80, people over 90. We had one 100-year-old take this, and sometimes it takes them a little longer. If you're really, if you're really not tech savvy, it, it may take four or five minutes, but you know, usually we're talking about a minute or two, so literally orders of magnitude faster than other methods. Um, and our assessment is more comprehensive. We provide diet type, diet quality, Diet quality is objectively measured using the HEI 2015 index. We can report servings of all the different food groups, and we can report nutrient level intake for up to 150 nutrients. And we have uh, put this to the test uh, against other methods. I'll come to that momentarily. For health professionals, and so if we were to integrate with CHARM, for example, or through the Emerson platform, we have a dashboard for health professionals where we can report out even more details. When, when we are interacting with an end user, most of those, most patients or, or clients, if you will, are not gonna want 150 nutrients, but we can curate that list so you can get them all, you can see the ones that are important to you. I want the endocrinology list, I want the cardiology list, whatever that might be. Um, I wanna track certain nutrients in a given patient. I want information about the, I wanna plot uh, change in uh, body mass index over time, on and on it goes. All of this can be delivered in the administrative dashboard. And here's what's behind the curtain. Uh, and and I, th this could take a while, and I want to certainly leave time for uh, questions, so I, I won't take too much time here. But, you know, inevitably, a good in a digital innovation is really simple at the user interface, and this one couldn't be much simpler which looks more like stuff you eat A or B. It really all comes down to that. Uh, and then in terms of goal diet, what are your health objectives? Do you want to lose weight, fix your blood pressure, manage your diabetes, avoid diabetes? And here are the diets that work best for that. Which of these are you actually willing to adopt? So we personalize nutrition based on two things that are really ready for prime time. The weight of evidence regarding specific health effects and personal preference. Nutrigenomics is not really ready for prime time yet. It will be someday and we can interface with that. That would be fine. But these two things, what's the right diet for your specific health concerns and what diet do you like? Those are ready for prime time. We rely on those. Uh, so we can deal with onboarding, goal setting, uh, you know, really in this very quick period of time. And it's effortless. It's effortless for the end user. But there's a lot of science behind the curtain. So basically, here's what we did. We were in R&D for the better part of four years. Uh, working with elite nutrition scientists, experts in epidemiology, a team of dietitians. First, we, we looked at the epidemiology so we could identify what are the range of diets, uh, the ranges of diets that people in the United States are actually eating. We wanted to capture about 95% of the general population. Uh, and and the, you know, because there are many diets that are, that are followed by very small numbers of people, we'll try to get to all of those eventually, but we wanted to start with about 95%, the middle of the bell curve, if you will. Uh, once we had those diet types, we had to define each of them operationally so it was unique and exclusive from all the other diets in our map. We then had to determine the right number of tiers using uh, the HEI 2015. We had to decide what metric to use, but then we had to decide the number of tiers so that it would be enough choices that we could get a really good closeness of fit, uh, but not so many choices that you bog down in, in choice paralysis. Then for every 
set of coordinates in our map, diet type by diet quality. Our team of dietitians had to develop that three-day meal plan, standardized to 2,000 calories a day, and then tweak it and adjust it so that it fell right at that decile level, one level out of 10 for the HEI 2015 score. And if that meant adjusting fiber, sodium, saturated fat, then the whole meal plan had to be revised accordingly. Once we had those three-day meal plans standardized to 2,000 calories a day, analyzed using NDSR so we have all the nutrient levels stored in our database, we then had to create an inventory of the foods and dishes that made up that three-day meal plan. And then for every one of those, we had to capture a high-definition photograph. We either did that at a photograph studio. Uh, we used one in, in Houston, Texas, um, when things were working there. And, um, and sympathies for anybody who's been going through the, the turmoil in Texas recently. Uh, or we, we captured something available online. But we have a vast library of these photographs. The photographs then had to be assembled in-house by our culinary cartography team so that these, these digital images were arranged in exactly the same way for every pair of diet type by diet quality to minimize the work on your eyes so that all that's different is the diet, foods are not moving around, the beverages are always in the same place, breakfast is in the same place, making it easy. And then we invented this method of dietary fingerprinting so that we could reduce the number of foods you'd have to look at, making pattern recognition even easier all of this is behind the curtain. All of this is hidden from view. If you're using this tool, all you need to worry about is which of these two images looks more like stuff you eat, A or B. As I mentioned briefly, we have been validating this robustly. We've tested this against the food frequency questionnaire. Very robust correlation there. We published one paper on that topic. There's a paper in press comparing this to the 24-hour recall where it also performed very well. We have a variety of other studies ongoing. We've been incorporated into at least half a dozen NIH-funded studies around the country. We're looking at this against biomarkers. We're on a mission to show this is not just faster, easier, more elegant, more user-friendly than FFQs and diet diaries and 24-hour recall. We're actually looking to show that it outperforms them. Uh, and, and the evidence we have so far is extremely encouraging in that regard. But in science, there's always the next study, the next study, more you need to do. So we are a modular offering. We're a SaaS business and we can carve up our platform into its component pieces. So for any given end user, you might just be interested in dietary assessment. Uh, when we have clients in the nutrient supplement space, for example, they may just want to know what is, what's the nutrient intake from diet for this individual? What are the gaps being left? And we want to recommend supplements to populate that gap. That's, that's part of our relationship with Emerson and Wellevate, for example. We might just want to track diet change over time. On the other hand, we might want to do goal setting. So if you're in a disease management program, say, let's find the optimal diet for you. And then I, as a human health coach, a dietitian, a clinician will help you get there. Or this can be completely virtualized. We can offer our full suite where we do ID, ideal tracking and navigation. And that can be done with or without human health coaches in the mix. This can be a fully automated experience. And in order to help people get there from here, we populated the route with micro challenges and we're constantly expanding that list of micro challenges. So we address a wide array of incremental improvements to diet. And we keep expanding that list so that we can personalize the journey no matter what diet people are starting with and no matter what kind of diet they want to land on. In order for us to coach people, we require that they move from a lower quality diet to an objectively higher quality diet. But, but other than that, we can actually be agnostic because there are high quality versions of low fat, low carb, paleo, vegan, Mediterranean, flexitarian. As long as people are improving the quality of their overall nutrition, we can take them there. And again, these micro challenges are the diet ID analog to a GPS turn list. We, we deliver these via text message or email every day. Basically, they're delivered by app. Uh, and so we have longitudinal engagement in people who are working to improve their diet quality. And we have a number of outcome measures. And you know, just like the validation science, capturing outcomes is a longitudinal effort. It'll go on for a long time. We will integrate into studies that work to improve diabetes and prevent diabetes and improve heart disease and prevent heart disease. Those will take years to come in. But what we can see now is that two thirds of people who engage with the platform meaningfully improve their diet quality, 40% are losing weight. The average weight loss for those who engage with the app is a better part of 10 pounds. People reduce their sugar intake. Uh, we had a, a, a 
case study in uh, a program called Fitworth uh, in Texas. In fact, 91% um, increase in fruit and vegetable intake, which was driving the improvement in, in diet quality and, and many other results such as this. Whoops. Okay, I don't know why I went backwards, my apologies. Uh, and again, for, for those of you who are involved in um, clinical care, this assessment will not change your workflow at all. And, and again, uh, as Ranjani knows, we're really excited about the prospect of complete integration into an EHR. Uh, then obviously you would just interface with this information. Patients could do this from home. They can do this over a smartphone. They can do it on their laptop. They can do it on an iPad. Uh, they can do it on a boat. They could do it with a goat. Uh, I don't know that the goat would help any. Never mind the goat, but you get the idea. Easily done anywhere. You could have them do this in your waiting room. They could sit down and do this with you if you wanted because it would take all of a minute. And in particular, if you wanted to be involved in helping them do the goal setting part. Well, wait a minute, you're forgetting you also have this condition. Oh yeah, good point, let me click on that too. So you could coach them through this. It would take two or three minutes to do that. So seamless integration into the usual workflow. And I say this as someone who did primary care medicine for 30 years, I understand we cannot give up time we don't have. If we're gonna capture diet as a vital sign, it's gotta be as expeditious as capturing blood pressure as a vital sign. Well, it is, it absolutely is. And again, it can be done before you even come into the room to meet with a patient. So it makes perfect sense to just have this embedded in the electronic health record. And that's what we're looking to do. Our experience with the, the claim that this is elegant, user-friendly, easy to use, robustly validated as well, uh, just as a side, uh, Ranjani, in the intro, you mentioned uh, the Dr. Oz show, Mehmet's a friend I, I've been on many times. I did one segment during the pandemic to talk about vitamin D, zinc, what we knew, what we didn't know. And at the end of that segment, Mehmet asked me about, uh, so, you know, say a few things about diet ID and, and how that could potentially help people improve their uh, immunity. And so I did. And it, because the team at Diet ID, you know, was aware I was doing this, we said, "Well, why don't why don't we combine this appearance with an offering to the general public? We're a B two B company generally, but you know, let's make this directly available to consumers um, for free, so people can assess their diet, compare what their diet is to what's optimal for for robust immune system support." Uh, and we'll make that available for just a few days following this appearance. Well, the response broke our server. Ultimately, I think we, we um, had 16,000 people uh, go through the system. And these were people watching daytime television. Again, many older people in the mix, people who were not especially tech savvy. 96% of them who clicked on learn more about Diet ID completed the entire assessment. That's absolutely unheard of. And the average for that group was under five minutes. And, and again, this was not a highly tech savvy group for the most part. We also asked with every deployment, did we get you? We have a visual analog scale. So you know, we validated against the FFQ, 24 hour recall. That's all great. But at the end of the day, do you feel comfortable? Do you feel heard? Do you feel that we got you? Did we capture your dietary restrictions, that you're gluten free, that you can't eat dairy? All, all the stuff that matters to you, did we get you? And our, our accuracy rating from end users themselves is consistently above 90%. So this tool can service anybody. Uh, and uh, we really think it can bring the power of nutrition coaching to places it hasn't even gone before. Uh, so again, comprehensive uh, array of, of services. And they're supported with ancillary materials. You see highlighted in the second bullet here, sample meal plan. So when people pick a goal diet, I want you know, tier eight Mediterranean, we have uh, a representative meal plan that, that goes out to them. Um, and all this information that's available to the end user is available to the clinician as well. And we're constantly building out more and more of these support materials. We have uh, ever new partnerships that allow us to expand these offerings so we can do recipes and meal planning and you know, every level of support that people need. And this can be combined with people committed to doing in-person coaching or telemedicine coaching. This can be a standalone, but it doesn't need to be. It also can be integrated into other platforms. One of our partnerships is with a diabetes prevention program delivered digitally, where we have the power to integrate our offering into that program, so we're not replacing it. It's the DPP, but we can help track dietary change in that program. We can help expedite dietary change, and we can help personalize nutrition within the context of the DPP which we think is really exciting. 
Uh, and as noted, the journey here is N of one. Um, so the, the, this, and this is why we wanted to change the name of behavior modification to behavioral navigation, because everybody has a different destination and your GPS doesn't tell you where to go. You decide where you want to go. You're the boss. It just makes it easier to get there from here so you don't get lost along the way. That's what we do for nutrition. We also tap into the prior science, the rich science of behavior modification and, and use all those key elements, motivational interviewing, social ecological model, the power of behavioral economics is, is available to us with some of our partnerships, social accountability, social support, all that good stuff. So we take full advantage of the prior science, but we're evolving it because people don't want to be told what to do. But when they tell you where they want to go, if you make it easy to get there, they say thank you. And that's the space we want to be in. And the result is people say lovely things about us. Everybody's got testimonials. We've got testimonials too. So thank you, Diet ID, for my 20 pound weight loss. You're welcome. We're delighted. Uh, may there be many more like you. Um, these are easy to show. You never know what the denominator is, but you know, everybody's got testimonials. So do we. But in our case, some of them come from luminaries in the field who've been doing standout work. Dean Ornish, as many of you know, has, has really revolutionized what can be done with cardiac rehab. Dean is a fan and supporter. We're integrating into cardiac rehab programs, and we've deployed to 50 corporate clients, uh, including some, some very large entities. You see Emerson here, and we're really proud of that partnership, major health systems, um, community health centers, and we, we do have uh, all these offerings available in both English and Spanish. We're working on other languages. Uh, so it's a new day and we're really excited to be a part of it. I, I want to close just the last few minutes before we open up to questions, Ranjani, on just this, this critical timely is, issue of personalization. Y you don't need me to tell you that personalized, customized everything uh, is the lingua franca now. I mean, that's what consumers expect. Whatever it is, you know, I, I don't want the generic version, I want the me version. Uh, it's a huge trend in nutrition, and, and sometimes I think it puts the cart ahead of the horse because we are one species, we are one kind of animal. The fundamentals of eating for health are very similar for all of us, more alike than different. Well, we capture that because we use an objective measure of overall diet quality that looks at every particular. And by doing that, we can say, look, whether you're going to eat paleo or vegan or something in between, when we say you're moving up to a higher quality diet, it's not our opinion. It's the best available measure validated against all cause mortality. But on the other hand, you may want to do paleo and not vegan or vegan, not paleo or Mediterranean, not vegan or paleo or flexitarian or pescatarian or whatever it may be. And if we say, no, sorry, we, we can't go there. You're going to say, well, then I don't, I'm not willing to play. We're going to lose people. So this issue is very timely. The New York Times recently weighed in about ethnic diets, noting that the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is, is living in a white bread world. In other words, if you want to eat well, you can have the DASH diet or the Diabetes Prevention Program diet. But if you want to eat a Latin diet or an Asian diet, sorry, we can't help you because you know, we don't work in that space. Well, that's, that's just wrong. And, and we're delighted to say that we're out in front of this issue. Many people have been talking about this for a long time and developing great materials. Uh, my friends at Old Ways have, have specific heritage-based food guide pyramids. There are dietary guidelines that are really um, uh, enlightened from uh, countries all around the world, particularly love Brazil's. Uh, but the opportunity to look across this expanse of ethnic um, diversity and say there are lots of different ways to eat well, we can and should capture that, is sort of unique to Diet ID because we establish an operational definition of a diet so that it's true to type, and that can be an ethnic type as well. And then we stratify by the same objective measures of diet quality. Well, we can do that with any kind of diet. So we started with diets that are defined by their nutritional patterns and then have expanded into diets that are defined by their ethnic patterns. So we're adding a Mexican diet, we'll be working on other Latin diets, Caribbean is uh, kind of a, a popular influence in the Northeast. We'll be doing two types of South Asian diets, both mixed and vegetarian, uh, and many others besides Chinese American. And, and we intend to globalize this offering as well. So ultimately we'll move through a wide array of different diets. And this is also an effort that can be tailored to the needs of a given client. Uh, 
this is really the next great horizon in personalized nutrition. You tell me what your health objectives are. You tell me the way you and your family like to eat. And we optimize nutrition within that context. And as noted, we have a partnership with a digitally delivered diabetes prevention program where we're working on this solution right now. And all of this is, you know, essentially is, is the, the detailed interactions with the app, but what can populate the dashboard via the electronic health record is diet is a vital sign. Here's an objective measure of diet quality. Here's the operationally defined diet type today. Um, here's what it was six months ago. Here's what it was a year ago. You track it. We can plot it for you just like you would track trends in glycohemoglobin, blood glucose, uh, body mass index, or blood pressure. And really that ought to be done. And so what we're looking to do, and, and we think an integration with an EHR is the ideal way to get there. And we think, you know, once that's done well, um, it, it really starts to create a whole new state of the art, a uh, whole new standard of care. You know, you can't have a complete electronic health record and not have a place for blood pressure. It, it would just be a glaring deficiency. We see the dawn of the day when that's true about diet and someone needs to lead in that space. And uh, we have obviously the technical wherewithal to do those integrations where we have an open API. Uh, we do that kind of work routinely. And again, we see that opportunity with Charm Health. And one of the reasons for the, the bringing this conversation to you this afternoon is to start to gauge the enthusiasm for that. But certainly I'm very excited about that. Uh, and then all of these assets are, are available right through the electronic health record. Um, so we've got various ways to implement this. Um, as noted, uh, open API, white labeled, we can be the Intel inside the, uh, the, the, the charm um, electronic health record. We're just a footnote, but we make it possible to capture diet as a vital sign. Uh, and the administrative dashboard that is coupled to that can be as rich as you want it to be. My tech team can speak to things like, you know, web hooks and APIs far more knowledgeably than I, but suffice to say, if there are any techies on the line, that, that we have a variety of ways to complete these integrations uh, and they can be customized by partner. So this is our mission uh, to make diet the vital sign. It clearly deserves to be. Uh, we're delighted to have partners with us on this journey like Emerson and Wellevate. So my thanks again uh, to them for sponsoring this get together. But we really do think it's a great advance with, to, to accomplish seamless integration into an EHR. And we're absolutely delighted to explore that opportunity with Charm. Uh, and as uh, some of our science advisors uh, have said in their testimonials, making diet a vital sign is a game changer. It really is. We will manage it far more reliably when we measure it effectively, efficiently, economically, and routinely. And that game is now afoot. So with that, Rajani, my thanks to you for this invitation, uh, to everybody listening in, and I will stop sharing my screen and I'm very happy to take questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Katz, for a very thorough introduction and going deeply into Diet ID. Um, this is a wonderful time for questions. Um, and um, also, as well, I wanted to reiterate that with Wellevate being our sponsor here, um, they have a special offer. If anybody signs up for Wellevate, um, any of the attendees, they can receive the basic edition of Diet ID free. Um, if you become a Wellevate uh, or a well, uh, Emerson uh, customer, if you sign up with them. And then I believe Mike uh, in uh, Mike had mentioned there is an email, sales at wellevate.me. Um, you can email that uh, and you can get more information. You can also go back on their website. Um, they will provide white glove support to get the account set up and uh, share details such as free shipping, promotional codes, et cetera, et cetera. And all this is available until March 15th. And I am seeing one question from Sarah about Middle Eastern diets. And yes, that, that's in our pipeline, Sarah. So uh, we have a Mediterranean diet and there, there are obviously Middle Eastern versions of that. That's already captured in our map. But specific Middle Eastern variants that, that shift to the, you know, the the eastern shore of the Mediterranean per se, um, and then moving uh, further east from there. Uh, those are in our queue. Um, you know, we, we've, we, to get to about 95% of the, the population of the U.S. and cover all those diets was, 
it's a lot of work. I mean, you, you can understand the detail behind this. And we're a startup company, so our resources are limited. But as noted, we, we have a list of diets that we're actively adding now. Um, and having gotten through all of the basic diet types by nutritional properties, we, we've moved our focus over to ethnic diets. And then we, we can adjust the sequencing of those based on priorities of a given population. But absolutely, what we're, we, we have Mediterranean, we'll be adding Middle Eastern. There is another question here. Um, what kinds of behavioral supports are built into Diet ID? How easy are those to use by the clinician from a mobile device? So the, for the, the patient to access this via mobile device is, is perfectly easy. Um, we're a web-based app, but we're, we're also uh, developing a, the, the standalone um, app for the App Store can be accessed there. So the support can come via email or via text messaging. Um, it's delivered every day and it's interactive. So if you're doing navigation, you're trying to get from your starting diet to your goal diet, essentially what you're interacting with is a personalized list of micro challenges we call them the, the incremental adjustments you need to make to your diet but it's fully interactive so you can adjust the sequencing of those i don't want to try this one yet can i do number two yep you can switch switch the order you can engage with a social network so you can invite buddies to support you this information is relayed via our server you know to essentially an, an analysis that then kicks back to you and you're congratulated for your successes and you, you get um, support when you're, you're hitting a snag, so how can we help you with this? Um, and all of that information about where someone is in their journey is available in the clinician's dashboard as well. So if you want, you know, at, at whatever interval you're interacting with your patient population, you can check in on their progress and you can supplement the support that, that's built into the digital offering. But again, we, we built a comprehensive system of behavioral supports based on the, the literature on behavior modification.